I'm very happy to host you today. Welcome to our webinar trilogy. And our webinar trilogy has the title European University for Everyone. Reflections on diversity and gender equality in the Enhanced Alliance. But I can tell you already now we will do also this reflection beyond our alliance. In our events, three events, we will discuss and reflect on diversity and gender equality. My name is Meli Hoskardesh. I am the Ombudsman for Diversity and Gender Equality in the European University Alliance, which is called ENHANCE. The topic today is not only relevant for our alliance. Diversity and gender equality are very important topics on the agenda of European universities, as you might know. The ENHANCE Alliance recently uh, published even its first annual report on diversity and gender equality, which you can also uh, see yourself. And I have just posted the link of that report in the chat. In three lunch break events, we will have a deep dive into, uh, into this report and also reflect on how we can become a European university for everyone. So you can see it on my screen. We will focus on three topics in this webinar series. Today's topic is how to mainstream diversity and gender equality. And next week, at the same time, we will discuss about how to empower underrepresented groups. And in two weeks, same time again, we will discuss on how to train staff and students about diversity and gender issues. The webinars are public for everyone, of course, and you are welcome to ask questions and to make comments in the chat, please, anytime. We will come to that at the end of the discussion. Please stay muted during the whole event, and we will record this event also for documentary reasons. And please use speaker's view of Zoom for the best event experience, so don't use the gallery view. Let's come to today's topic how to mainstream diversity and uh, gender equality. I have invited three guests from Enhance Alliance today. That's why I warmly welcome Katrin Feldman, Diana Ivizate, and Maria uh, Saline as our panelists today. First, we will get to know them uh, one by one. Let's start with our colleague, Katrin, Katrin Feldman. Uh, she works at RWTH Aachen University as Managing Director of the Working Group Inclusion, Diversity Management and Controlling. So welcome, Katrin. Nice to have you here. Uh, and I ask, all, I ask all panelists to choose a symbolic picture about today's topic. And I will just show your picture, Katrin, and will ask you to tell us why you have uh, chosen this picture. So it's up to you now, please. <laughs> Yes, thanks a lot. Thanks for the introduction, Lady. Yes, I also welcome everyone here. I don't see you um, all, yes, <laughs> but I'm starting. I bought a picture from a famous German conservative newspaper. Um, the photo was titled, a photo from Munich courses is dear. Maybe someone of you understands German, but yes, it's a dear, uh, which was caused. Uh, you may have seen this photo too. It shows a dinner of very important company leaders at the Munich Security Conference last month. It's not an old photo, it's last month taken. It was uh, taken last month. Maybe half of the men have more than one passport or have a migration background, but all look Western. Maybe some of them suffer of a chronic illness, is not married to a woman, is a first generation academic, but all of them are male and older than 40 or even 60. I do not see one person of color or someone who does not wear a suit with a tie. No one sees diversity on this picture. So it is not a good example for diversity. At our university, homogeneous groups like shown are not common anymore, but in some fields, the diversity of gender cultures and ages is still on a very low level. So we ask ourselves, how can diversity at a university look like? Yes, that may be discussed later. Thank you, Catherine, for sure. This is the main topic today, how to mainstream diversity and gender equality. I stop uh, sharing and maybe we will come, to, uh, come back to that picture later on, but thank you. 
uh, I will go to our second panelist. Her name is Diana Ivizate. She works at the Polytechnical University of Valencia, uh, UPV, as a professor for English. And yeah, Diana, you are an active member of the experts group on diversity and gender equality in Enhance. And now I want to share also your picture with our public. And I will ask you please to share your story behind that picture with us. Yes. First of all, then, thank you so much, Meli, for your introduction. And thank you all. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, it's nice to have you here. Uh, well, this picture, uh, I can read uh, <laughs> the, the warning, uh, because I think it's a warning, diversity. The expression of the irreplaceable value of each person. And well, I have chosen this picture because this image has been um, identifying the lines of UPB University policy on equality of women and men and equal treatment and non-discrimination, uh, which includes the protection of intersections that converge in all people, uh, but with an impact generally negative in those who by their condition or identification with a certain group uh, are differentiated by the hegemonic majority, either by their sexual orientation or identity, either by origin or culture differentiated in that hegemonic uh, society. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for this picture. So. I will stop sharing again. And now I go to our third panelist. Her name is Maria, Maria Sarina, and she works at Chalmers University of Technology as project manager at Office for Strategic Collaborations. But she is also a project coordinator for the Gender Initiative for Excellence project, which is uh, run at Chalmers. And hello, Maria, welcome. Also nice to have you Thank here. You. And I will also share, of course, your picture with some uh, people already maybe discovered in your background. Um, nope, that's not my picture. So let me do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can start. Yeah, please, thanks. Please tell thanks, us Millie, the story. For... Yes. Uh, yes. There it is. <laughs> mm, thank you, Millie. And thanks for the introduction. It's nice to be here with Diana and, and uh, Catherine. So, yes, I work at Chalmers University with the project called Gender Initiative for Excellence, Genie. Um, and it was hard to choose a picture. Uh, this is a topic, gender, gender equality. It's a topic I feel like it's connected to basically everything we do in the world. And I have a background as a, as a researcher in biophysics. But I chose this picture because now when I work with gender equality in the academia, I feel like most of us are like sheep in a herd. We just do our work, do what we do. We're stuck in the patterns. We're really good at what we do, but no one really kind of Lifts, the, lifts your view and see the beautiful mountains and whatever is around us. And also that mirror in the middle is symbolic because what we try to do, and I feel like a lot of the work we do is to increase the awareness. And the only way to make it really work, I think is if people look within, you look in the mirror and see who am I? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? And I think the academy is a perfect place. You're not here to make big money. You're here because you want to do good. Most of us are. It's an I enjoy being in the academic setting for the sake of why we're here. Uh, but I feel like gender equality, we need, to, we need to help people see that it's not a perfect place. And we, yeah, so look, we look within and then steering this herd in the right direction. And That's my thinking. Thank you. And who is steering in the picture? Do you have an idea on that or is it not clear? It's very clear. It's unclear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maria. <laughs> Please, uh, Diana. I just chose it. I picked it from the yeah. internet. So if someone yeah. feels it's theirs, yeah. I'm I, sorry. I, I yeah. didn't have any idea before, but it's so poetic what she just said. Mm -hmm. And that, that metaphor really, uh, uh, I have loved that because we all come in that herd. We do not uh, separate ourselves from the rest. And uh, mm -hmm. if we yeah. do not 
look at the mirror, we'll never find out who we really are. So mm -hmm. I loved yeah. Maria's <laughs> interpretation, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And we're stressed. There's lots to do, so you don't have time. Yeah, I mean, we will discuss about the things, what is to do actually now. Maybe let me just stay with you, Maria, for a while, because yeah. uh, when we announced this webinar, we also said it would be about mainstreaming of gender equality and diversity and what you practically see at our universities throughout Europe in Enhanced, but also outside of Enhanced in other alliances, universities work on gender equality plans to reach yeah. that equality, which we talk now. And maybe the question to start with, also a little bit controversial question, actually, why do we need equality in academia? What, what, what mm -hmm. are your thoughts on that? I think it goes back to, uh, what I say, why are we here? Look in the mirror, why do you choose to be in academia? And I think most of the people, at least the people I speak to, the reason for them is they want to do good. They see the challenges out in the world, in society, and we have all the climate problems. So the reason you want to be in the academia is to do good. But you can only see what you see. You're stuck in your way of seeing the world and what you're grown up in. So for the academy to answer all the complicated questions, we need to have all the possible views, the eyes, the brains, the ways of coming at a problem and a challenge. So I think having equality in the academia is sort of it's a no brainer. We need that to be able to answer to all the complicated questions that the university is here to do. A company might choose a direction, but I think university is, it's the larger, we're going everywhere. Yeah. So the chance is very low probably that we will uh, see a picture of an academia meeting like the picture of Katrin with all men, or how do you mm -hmm. look at that? Yeah, I mean, that kind of university will see what men find interesting, what yeah. men see as problems, and what they run into. And they, there are limitations to being that homogenous group. So I think a university that want to actually do the good for the world need to look beyond and have a very broad group. And then it's also fair and it's more fun to be a mixed group. But I think as a sort of business point for university, yeah. that's, that's a strength. Okay. And I would like to also ask Diana about uh, of, about that aspect, equality, and let's look at gender equality plans of our universities. Now you three are representing three different universities, all member of Enhance. So how is it in Valencia, in UPV, Diana? So what are for you maybe the most important strategical points in your gender equality plan? How do you, how do you deal with it? So maybe yes. tell us a little UPV, bit more about it. Uh, uh, Universitat Politecnica de Valencia has the third equality plan at the moment. Uh, so that it is structured into four main dimensions. And the one that uh, it, uh, starts the plan is the dimension of equality and non-discrimination in recruitment and career advancement. That is selection and recruitment processes, promotion and training. There's a second dimension uh, which deals with conciliation and co-responsibility for all groups, and this is linked to the enhanced effort for mobility. The third dimension is gender balance, dimension in leadership and decisions, uh, which includes, uh, of course, representation of women and men in all areas, recruitment of female talent in the STEM area. And we have, um, well, in that same uh, dimension, we have to take into account gender perspective in research teams, gender perspective in the research process, that is analysis, development, expected results, and dissemination. And the last dimension we're focusing this third plan on is dimension of measures against gender-based violence, including sexual harassment and violence based on causes of discrimination, based on status or origin, the so-called hate crimes. So what I hear from here, so it addresses different aspects. Actually, it's in, in total very diverse itself. Uh, let's say your approach at UPV. I just look at the other colleagues, Katrin or Maria, would you say your universities have some other aspects, or do you recognize these aspects also in your uh, strategy when dealing with equality, gender equality? Yes, I think we also have the same aspects, of course. Mm -hmm. And 
yes, but we not only have uh, a gender equality plan and uh, we are um, we have gender equality plan uh, plans for 20 years uh, moreover at our university and uh, they have helped. Um, not all uh, problems were solved uh, uh, so far, but we are going on. We, for example, when I look at the, the representation of women at the higher levels, at our university, at the, um, at the rectorate, at uh, the higher levels of administrations, or of course at the level of professors, um, we have um, success. We, we started with a ratio with 88% with, uh, of women at the level of professors 15 or 20 years ago. Now, now we have more than 20. It's a, very, it's a success for our university, but uh, it's not uh, equality. There's uh, still things to do and, and there's still a way to go. Um, yes, but we do not only focus on gender, of course, as our colleagues also do. Uh, we also have in mind the other dimensions um, of diversity. For example, my, my uh, personal approach is the inclusion of uh, students and staff with, um, uh, with handicap, with disabilities. And uh, we discuss a lot with a, a lot of people, more than 50 at our university, um, very hard. We, we uh, made a plan, an action plan to uh, develop um, a structure to, to, to develop measures and, and to implement the measures. And yes, we are, have uh, lots of other plans, like, uh, for example, the international strategy and um, yes, so on. Uh, I just stayed a little bit longer at the gender equality plan and uh, maybe ask you, Maria, because I will share mm -hmm. now one uh, result of the public uh, survey, because we ask the public who is here now before the event and we ask them what they think about gender equality plans. And let's maybe look at the answers. The question was, uh, is having a gender equality plan the only way to reach full equality of men and women in, our, in academia, in our universities? And yeah, what I see here, is 90% said no, it is not the only way. And only 10% says yes. So what do you think about this when you see it, Mar Maria? It makes me happy. Makes it happy, why? <laughs> it's good. Uh, well, that people think outside the box. Mm -hmm. I think a uh, gender quality plan is really good because you can what you put down in print, you can measure. And we definitely need to measure. So it's nice to have a plan and you can all agree around the plan. But then we are different. So some people get really excited about a plan and want to fulfill the plan and kind of tick the boxes. So we get one group of people by having a gender equality plan. But a lot of people need to be engaged different ways. And as I was talking about the mirror, you need to, I'm really for this. I believe that people are good and you need to look within and see what you're doing and why. So some people need the equality plan. Some, need, some people need to be engaged by sort of bottom up initiative some people need to have their push down from from the leaders which might be initiated with a plan okay. so i think just we need to have many different ways but of course a plan is a good way to have something to talk about and make actions around and it's easier you can't really hide if it's written down well then you need to fulfill it yeah, as I'm also happy to hear that you are happy because of that people think out of the box like with this 90 percent but you said also bottom up uh, ideas, for example, for some groups. Can you give mm -hmm. us some examples from your charmer strategy? What do you do? What What is there from bottom-up bottom -up examples, for example? Yeah, so so what I lead is, or I lead together with two leaders and the coordinator of a gender initiative for excellence initiative. And this was actually started by a bottom-up uh, idea uh, from the foundation that owns our university. They, they had a call and said, what do we need to do to improve the university? This was about four years ago. So the whole faculty get together and talked, how do we, what do we want to do? And it ended up being three big initiatives, whereas this genie is one. So it is the faculty itself that said, we need to improve the gender equality where we work. And it ended up being this um, yeah, initiative that I'm working with. So that's a bottom up in itself. So the way we run it is we talk to as many people as we can. We want to hear what they need, what we can do, do we sponsor one person? Do we sponsor a group? Do we start networks? We really were out to listen and see what can we do to increase awareness? Uh, and, and what is the need at this university? And, and as well, we also talk to the leaders. Yeah. Uh, but we try to do a lot of bottom up. 
I see lots of cross communication also between different levels when, when you describe this. Is it, I'm just wondering, is it what we mean by mainstreaming? Is it at the end helping us to mainstream this equality and in general diversity? For me, in Sweden, there's been a lot of gender mainstreaming, and that's been a, a push from the states that we need to mainstream, meaning making sure that gender equality is on the agenda everywhere, that it's always brought up in different meetings, that it is kind of incorporated everywhere, which is really nice, but it's been a push from the states, uh, but it hasn't really got people's hearts. Uh, it's been something that you need to do. So for me, the gender mainstreaming is pushing it in on the paperwork. But what we have seen, it hasn't done so much. It's been good because people are aware, but you don't believe in it that much. So we're trying to approach from the other direction and say, well, this is this is good for you and to sort of get it into your heart. Yeah, I will just share uh, uh, again another result of the mini survey with our public who is here now today about mainstreaming. We ask them what they think, what is mainstreaming. Yeah. Maybe Katrin or Diana, uh, whoever wants to answer. I will just share it. So this is this was the question. Uh, what do you understand by mainstreaming diversity and gender equality? So when you look at these answers of our public, so commitment, being part of decisions, uh, equity, information, integration, and so on, just to name some of them. What comes to your, in your mind? So is it what you also see it in, let's start with Katrin. Is it also what you would define mainstreaming in Aachen setting? Or do you... Yeah, yes, of course. Yes, I think we, we all have the same ideas. Um, being part of the process, uh, being, being part of decisions means, yes, people want to join the decisions, we want to, um, to share their, their ideas and, and uh, the ideas from the bottom must lead to good decisions uh, at the top. But commitment also means that, uh, the, that the leaders, very, that they really think uh, that um, diversity or equality is a good thing and they want to um, promote it. Yes, information have to be given also. Yes, it, it, um, there, I think the plans do really help to, uh, to have the information on one place, information on how uh, things are going, but uh, which goals uh, are set and could be set. And, and yes, goals have to be discussed and yeah. um, Yes, what we, what we always uh, want to do is, uh, yeah, doing it in, in a public way. Not only that, uh, yes, um, set of... Uh, in terms of like that everyone gets gets the news and get involved yes. in it, maybe. Maybe it is closer mm -hmm. to that what bottom-up is, what Maria just explained, or is it, do you mean more than this bottom-up idea? <laughs> I think bottom up means a lot, but yeah, making people aware, yeah. uh, communication yeah. is super important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I I look at Diana also. What what do you think, Diana, when you see this uh, these words about? Yes, uh, these ideas. Uh, I, I would underline first uh, being part of decisions mm -hmm. because sometimes people don't find themselves belonging mm -hmm. anywhere mm -hmm. to decide anything. So that's a very important aspect uh, of the thoughts. And uh, because uh, the first issue when mainstream and diversity and gender equality is the recognition of the equality of women and men. And it is a principle enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So uh, starting by that, people must be allowed to be part of decisions, but is this a shift so far? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this is uh, something that we can uh, take for granted in many institutions. Uh, and so, well, there are many different words that I, I could mention that, innovation and uh, being respectful and all the other ones, I don't have them in front of me, so I will be brief. Uh, I think that's, that's enough. Bye yeah. now. Thank you. I want to show you another uh, uh, chart, uh, this time from Enhance. This is, let's say, the reality now, even if the numbers are uh, partly two years old, but you will recognize a tendency. This is uh, the female population in enhanced universities 
And uh, so you can see in different colors, basically all the universities. You can see also the green is UPB Valencia and Chalmers is so this uh, light blue and Avitea is uh, uh, yeah, yellow or orange, almost yellow. And uh, what you see is here on the left side is female students, which is uh, because all enhanced universities are technical universities, because I have to add that information. It is more male oriented population there. Uh, I just see uh, an yeah, exception at NTNU, our Norwegian partner, but uh, you can see actually uh, the graphic almost about 30%. And then you, you look at the administrative and technical stuff in our universities, which is actually more female uh, dominant, basically almost in all partner universities. And after that, it will be also very interesting for me when I look at the academic stuff. Uh, this is the academic stuff in different grades. Grade uh, D is uh, Euro Europe-wide a kind of uh, uh, way to compare different grades. And it is uh, like the lowest grade. And then when you go to grade A, it is like the highest grade. You are a professor, uh, you are at the highest level. And what you see is actually a picture, which is not typical only for enhanced, it is actually typical in all technical universities and even in, yeah, I would say more than technical universities as well. So uh, less female population is there, the higher you are. So uh, what does this picture tell to you? Maybe I start with you, Diana, again, because you are a professor uh, at UPV mm -hmm. as well. And yeah, of course, when you look at the, each university, you see some differences. For example, grade B, uh, uh, NTNU is like quite higher than, let's say, uh, yeah, higher than UPV uh, in this graphic, in this chart. But in general, what do you think about this? We talk about, uh, yeah, this is a typical picture in, in Europe, basically. Well, I'm sure we have to do a lot more than mm -hmm. to, to, to get more uh, female professor staff and students integrated in technical degrees and technical universities. Uh, anyway, uh, each university has a plan of its own when they try to uh, recruit those female talents that uh, I was talking before. And uh, I believe that uh, during, I, I mean, through the, the good strategies and through well-organized plans, we can get a higher number of female incorporated into the areas of technical degrees, technical universities, and in STEM uh, degrees. Uh, I mean, progressively, we're not going to achieve that all of a sudden, uh, overnight, but um, we are doing a, a job to achieve some results. And I think in a few years, we will uh, at least we can say in the next 10 years, we will have a, a, a great difference. I mean, a higher number of female um, talent, uh, either professors, students, or administrative staff uh, recruited in technical universities. Yeah, thank you. I think Catherine also said something similar like that we are processing. You can even compare numbers like 10 years ago. Now it is more female when we talk about gender equality, but we are not there yet. I have checked, for example, the gender equality report, which has just been published in Europe, right? And it says if we go with that tempo uh, of becoming more and more equal, uh, it will take us at least 50 years uh, to to talk from kind of absolute equality. So it is very yeah, long Yeah, and journey. I've heard 80 years, so you can 80, hear. so <laughs> yeah. probably there are also some scientific discussions on that, but I think yeah, it is yeah, yeah. long time, long, too long, right? Yeah, too long. May, yeah. I, may I add here? Please, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you can think about it. It's, it's just an equation. You need to have more people in and you have to not lose the ones that are in the top, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we at Chalmers were working in two parts. It's both to recruit more students and here at NU, they're doing something good. Um, so yeah. we've been looking at them and they, they have a lot of good initiatives to get female small students from secondary school to come and see what it's like. And they, mm -hmm. they do a lot of things and apparently it works. So we might look at them even more. Yeah, yeah you but see- But then at Chalmers- mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yeah, you see it also that uh, NTNU, for example, is good in some uh, statistics. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And is it, do you think, because of their good working 
gender equality plan plus we discuss about additional activities is it a kind of mix of all these activities or what is the secret of that some universities reach that 50 percent than the others it's very hard to say i think we should we should ask them what they've done but i do believe it's a lot of the actions but it might have to do with subjects they teach mm -hmm. Uh, what other universities are around. So it's, it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. But I know that they worked for a long time with making the university open for everyone and have a lot of kind of open invites mm -hmm. for students to come and see that it's not scary. You can, mm -hmm. you can be whatever you like. Oh, but maybe. the second point yeah, uh, I just wanted to make is the, the leaky pipeline where people are actually leaving university and women more than men. This is something we have looked into and particularly in the chemistry department because it's one of the places where there's always been around 50% students, 50% female, there are PhD students, and then you have the decline. So we had a, a very good professor. He said, this is crazy. Why is that? Uh, so as a bottom-up initiative from Genie, then, we supported him to have a master student that do deep surveys with women and men that have left Chalmers to see, why did you leave? What is the purpose for you? And now they're on their third uh, round of interviews and understanding what, because we want to know why we want to keep the good people. And basically what they've seen so far is something called non-events. And I think that comes down to your uh, you know, subconscious that women feel like they're not invited. They're not being part of. So it's not mean things. It's just non-events. They are a little bit more invisible. And then it's easier to take off to somewhere else where you're seen. And I think this is good information. Uh, we speak a lot about this at Chalmers and try to make the leaders aware that you need to see everyone. You need to appreciate who is there and slowly change the culture. Yeah. So it seems our leak, uh, uh, leak pipeline is a uh, great B in enhanced average. And when you look at the graphics, so it is actually more or less, yeah. let's say constant. Still, mm -hmm. I mean, way below 50%, but, and then mm -hmm. you have the great A, which is yeah, less. And uh, I just uh, asked Katrin now uh, about yes. this graphic and in general, this is a graphic which shows different universities collaborating in enhanced. This is an alliance, European alliance. What do you think? What can enhance change? What can enhance help to uh, be more equal, to be more diverse at the end? What do you think on that? I think the point is still in the beginning that uh, at the most, uh, universities only uh, 30 percent or less than 40 percent of the students are female but this is a so difficult point I, I i see that i have the numbers in mind uh, of, of the last two decades more or less and um concerning relating to our university we also have had 30 32 33 percent of female students it is so difficult to tackle these problems Maybe we can learn better from each other. Maybe we can learn uh, from the Norwegian example, how, uh, what they are doing. Maybe we can uh, do more initiatives as we are doing at the moment to, um, to address girls or female, uh, female students to go into the topics, the technical topics. Maybe we can change our university. Maybe we can change the subjects of the technical, uh, in, in the technical um, area a little bit. Some, um, uh, some research has shown that uh, when you don't uh, offer informatic, you offer informatic uh, with the, um, um, with a special- uh, Some application. Yes, with an application, it, it, uh, it's easier for women to, uh, to go for it. I don't know, I'm not a specialist for this. Yes, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's still this moment when the uh, people, when the young people decide to, uh, to, to come to a university to begin their studies, we have to uh, look at this. At the end, yes, we have success. As I mentioned before, we had uh, less than 10% of female professors 15 years ago. It's not so long away mm -hmm. uh, ago, 15 years. We, things have changed uh, a lot. And I think uh, things will change more in the uh, coming years. At in uh, VTH, we have a lot of female professors, uh, professors of grade B at the moment, we will have more at grade A in some years. It will only last some years, but changes uh, will be made. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. I mean, uh, but still, we 
I mean, this is even not an example from academic world now, but the picture you have sh shown in the beginning, of course, yeah, also shows the other reality that, yeah, you have still this huge table with only men sitting on that. And of course, they might have a specific diversity, which we don't see at first sight, but at the end, it is a kind of still a big challenge, which is, mm -hmm. let's say, around the corner and waiting, waiting for us to disturb the process and or to slow it down, uh, for my feeling. I come a little bit to the diversity in general i mean a little bit removed from uh, uh only focusing on the gender aspect which is of, of course part of diversity itself but uh what do we do to become more diverse in general let's look at other uh, parts of this discussion so uh do we also have good strategies for example to become more diverse in our universities or what do you think what are the challenges in that to, to become more diverse and to, yeah, let's say to mainstream that diversity at the end. So Maria, I see you are. Mm -hmm. Maria, I'm thinking. You are, you are thinking. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I work mostly with the gender equality, uh, yeah. but other diversion, um, diversities. I know we've been discussing what kind of, what we can measure, because I think if you need to measure to know status quo, and then you can see mm -hmm. hopefully some, some change. And in Sweden, we have a really hard time getting data for a lot of the other aspects of diversity due to integrity. Um, so for us, that's more complicated. Uh, and we made the decision to focus on gender diversity and then a lot of things will come naturally after that. If we don't wanna spread ourselves too thin, but that's that's my, pro my, my project. Uh, the rest of Chalmers is working on other diversities uh, as well. Yeah. And not, uh, yeah. Uh, I know Katrin is also working a lot in diversity field, in inclusion field, especially. Katrin, how do you experience that at RWTH? Yes, um, I, I just have explained what we are doing. We, uh, we discussed a plan, we uh, published a plan. Uh, yes, it's what's a plan, we, but uh, um, may help us to that we have discussed it, that we have measures now, that we can concentrate on measures, we can concentrate how to implement them really, not um, maybe not, um, not all the measures in one year or in, in, in uh, six months. We have a, a time frame of uh, six or seven years to, to implement what we uh, decided to do. And uh, by discussing it, by, by talking to each other, we hope to improve the system. We hope to improve the situation in this case, for example, for, um, for, for students and uh, staff with uh, disabilities. It's, yes, it's our, hope. it's our hope. And we ask them, this maybe the one, one point for every uh, diversity dimension. We have to talk to people who have special needs, who have other needs, who have other uh, wishes, how, the, how a university should be and, and uh, yes. This is also a future topic, I would say. I mean, th this topic is keeping us busy already now. I want to share another chart uh, from our public. This is what they think about the future. Uh, are diversity and gender equality still a topic in European universities, in Enhance or in other European alliances in 2075? So it's not a mistake. It, is, it was meant to be 2075, very far mm -hmm. away. So I didn't even calculate how old I will be if I still live, mm -hmm. theoretically. And so our public said, uh, yes, 50%. It will still keep us busy. I was really very curious about your opinion. Is our what will keep us busy already? And 40% says, no, it won't keep us busy. Also very interesting, almost 50-50% mm -hmm. here. And yeah, 10% is not sure if this is still mm -hmm. a topic. So what do you think, what comes to your mind when you see this, let's say, yeah, two different options for the future? I think if I may start, um, I think, uh, well, one, it, human beings are limited. We are human beings. And I think it's kind of comes natural that we want to have an in-group and an out-group. So I think I'm, I'm a little bit negative. I think there definitely will be some kind of divide between be human beings, which is the yes, we will need, we will still work on this. Um, I hope we will get past that. But I think there's always going to be, I mean, we see the world today. There's always a struggle. There's always fights. The grass is greener. You make fun of those who don't look like you, who are different from you. But is it it's very hard to get that to move away. Is but maybe it will be different topics. 
Exactly. Maybe it won't be gender. Ask. Is it more mm -hmm. mainstreamed in a way that it is normal to have the diversity, to have someone with a handicap, to have someone with a, a gender equality, maybe just on yeah. statistical way. And so, so that these people are more mixed and it's more normal and they have new challenges than other topics. Might be, might be. I can't see what it is, but I think human beings will be limited and we will have in and out groups, yeah. uh, but the groups might change. Yeah, That's my gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, uh, Diana? Uh, uh, I agree with the 50% in blue uh -huh. because, yes. well, I believe that uh, what we need for the future is a, an equality and diversity plan. I would not call it a, a gender and diversity plan, but equality and diversity plan because it includes everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, so equality and diversity are going to be a topic in European, is going to be a topic in European universities by 2075, for sure, because um, as Maria was saying, uh, is we human beings, the ones who uh, will deal with this, uh, the ones who will develop what happened, uh, what is gonna happen in the future. But I believe, yes, that we will need it because as we were saying before, uh, many people said that in, in the graph about universities, probably, in 50 years, we will <laughs> achieve that mm -hmm. equality needed, or as Maria said, in 80 years then. Uh, that is why I agree with a 50% uh, that we would need um, this uh, type of plans, uh, equality and diversity plans, I would uh, call them mm -hmm. in, in the future. Uh, because I, I don't think we're going to be equal as uh, the horizon uh, European uh, units plan, uh, I mean, defines that equality. So I don't think we're going to be equal in, in by the year 2075 if we do not progress with many other plans before. Yeah, this is my opinion. Thank you, Catherine. What do you, uh, how, how does it look like a daily life 2075 diversity yeah. awareness <laughs> in Aachen? <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, <laughs> I have to agree with Diana. I'm, I'm not so optimistic that we will overcome uh, mm -hmm. the inequalities in, yeah. the, in some decades in, in the future. In, in, in the future, I, I think uh, inequality of sexes, inequality of races, inequality of people with uh, different ability is so is, is lasting so long. It's somehow forever or somehow for centuries. It uh, won't be overcome. Never, <laughs> I think. think? We, come, we can come further, yes. Yeah. We are working on it. We can come further. I think uh, in a lot of countries in Europe and, and other uh, countries in the world, uh, we are getting better. But yes, as we see, uh, there's, all, there's not only progress. We have situations in other countries like, yes. Uh, he's some part of, of you, of course, but also in, in, in uh, United States when they will elect uh, again. And yes, it's not only going better. But do you no. think people who answered 40% no? So they think they, it's no, it's not going to keep us busy. So they're optimistic. Or what, what, what do you think about that 40%? I mean, it's also a big group who thinks, no, it's not going to keep us busy. <laughs> well, that they might be right as well, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. they, they think, well, I see women integrated in many uh, gover uh, governmental policies right now. I see mm -hmm. women have many rights they didn't have 10 years ago. I believe this is running so fast. So the, the group of 40%, they might think, this is running too fast. <laughs> We'd never know. <laughs> they might, mm. both groups might be correct, <laughs> depending on yeah. their views, of course. <laughs> That's true. And if you look at the students, for them, gender equality is such a natural thing. And whatever sexuality you have, they're much more open. So I think we need to, I mean, this, this has always been said that you have to look at the younger people, but we really need to do that see what they want and build the university that is for them. And if we do that, I think we have hopes. So we're trying to talk to this youth students and the PhD students a lot and kind of use them as a leverage for the leaders to say, hey, and I'm thinking these are the 40% that maybe gender 
you know, gender equality and diversity, that's not an issue. There might be some other things coming up, but at least to work with the, what we have now and make as equal university as possible. Talk about for me at least it's also a generational discussion and i just shared it in my last chart for today it is just kind of uh yeah kind of snapshot of the activities all enhanced activities i will have to say these are joint enhanced activities which we have created new because our alliance is new like other alliances in europe and so we have this result we have reached uh, 54 uh, percent male population in the activities among different participants and uh, 46 percent female so this is something which is there now of course this number is dynamic it will change it when we monitor our uh, joint alliance activities in this year again uh, and mm -hmm. next year and so on and uh, this will change but now we have almost 50 50 and i can say so this is these are the young people in it Counted. So these are, uh, let's say, maybe the generation you just mentioned, Maria, uh, they don't care about. So it's just normal uh, to have this equality and so on. So is it maybe something that an alliance like Enhance on all the other alliances can uh, contribute to, to more equality, to more diversity in their joint activities? Is it it's a chance maybe to change the structures mm -hmm. and habits? Sure. sure. Or what mm -hmm. are... Uh, I mean, this is of course a chance for sure, but maybe what is the biggest challenge to keep this graphic like it is, even maybe to make it more 50%, but I mean, this is quite obviously better than the reality, what, you, what we have now, mm -hmm. you have just seen the other chart mm -hmm. with our universities. Yeah. So it seems like the women are attending more than the men. And, and that yeah. is a, it could, could be bad that women are kind of overworking and doing the work that you don't really get paid for. We are discussing that a lot, that you want women to be you know, the kind of evaluation committees, you want them to be in leadership positions and all these are needed, but in some ways you're spreading them very thin. And there's a concept called academic household work that you're doing the work, which could be these enhanced workshops and meetings. You're doing the work that is not giving you, if you're, if you're a researcher, it's not giving you the academic merits that you need to do what you should do. Maybe you as a person love doing it and then you should do it. But if you're doing it because you're a woman and you feel like it's kind of a burden on your shoulders or it needs to be a 50-50 representation and you don't have that in your department. So I think one should just be aware who is doing it and why and definitely make sure that you, I mean, this is a topic that is super important that you should get the academic merits or the merits for wherever you are situated that your, your boss knows that this is important work. So make sure that the gender equality and diversity work is really getting valued what it is worth i, I think felt, that i'm hmm? sorry i felt like maria was talking about myself because <laughs> it's about me it because I, I am a professor who always does research on gender and diversity and in many gender issues mm -hmm. but on violence against women but then to be evaluated i must present many articles, books on sciences, because I'm teaching science and engineering. And those are the topics that I should develop more for uh, research, not the mm -hmm. ones related to gender. Those I do because I like them. <laughs> yeah. And it wouldn't it be lovely if you could get valued for that as well? Because you're doing a big job for your university and Thinking for- Thinking about house. that. Yes, <laughs> I would mm -hmm. like to be recognized in yeah. that field. Yeah, so I think that is a key to recognize this is a field that is super important yeah. for everyone to have a good work environment and to make a university that actually can have the best brains and the most people to do kind of answer to the challenges the world gives us. Yeah, of course, I'm sure yes. many women feel um, that they are in that group that you have just mentioned. I was just yeah. saying yeah. myself, but I know there are other many women uh, included, of course, that was a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So it means by recognizing, recognizing and giving this value and uh, so we come step closer to the university for everyone, actually, yeah. also on the way that even it's a longer process. Mm -hmm. And great, thank you. Uh, looking at the time, it's 10 minutes left. I will also give a 
yeah, the possibility to talk about some questions we have we have collected uh, in the chat and uh, I was also checking what is coming in and so on so please from now on invitation to everyone who is still listening and uh, to write an, a question or a comment uh, in the chat but I have already one uh, question so I am wondering the question is I am wondering if in the enhanced university group do you follow the DORA assessment guidelines for the recruitment of faculty so uh, that's the question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if someone is uh, can answer that or in general, at least. I can say we have heard of it and it is mm -hmm. a good thing. We don't implement it at Chalmers yet, but yeah. um, we want to look at it and maybe take some bits and pieces yeah. um, from that. Is it also similar in your universities, UPV, EVTH, or did you? I have to admit, I don't know this Nauru, the daughter. Exactly the same. I have heard of it, but uh, we're not completely, um, I, I mean, we haven't applied any of that. And it's not, we don't know much about. So uh, it would be good to share ideas, to receive information uh, and uh, to, uh, at the end, eventually, we, we could implement some of the points uh, in that uh, plan, but at the moment, we're not. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. I would also answer similar from enhanced perspective, but uh, I know from the uh, annual report we have just published, which is also which I have shared in the beginning, that we know that universities are using different assessments guidelines or activities but it doesn't mean that's that one so i would also find it out and check check it out actually what exactly it contains and it can be even an inspirational uh, resource for our uh, further activities in that field thank you for that question and the comment i go to the next question uh, what learnings can we extract from NTNU, which is one of the partners of uh, enhanced alliance out of number of female students so we have just seen they but also some other enhanced universities have a higher amount compared to other partners. So they are doing something better, but we have just discussed also. What would you say? Uh, maybe I start with Maria, you are the neighbor country. <laughs> maybe you know the reality more and let's see how, uh, yeah, how, what you think about it. Well, unfortunately, I don't know much more. Yeah. Uh, I know we have the student recruitment people here do have a contact with NTNU yeah. and go and visit them sometimes. So they have been an inspiration for Chalmers for a long time. Mm -hmm. But exactly what they do, I know they have this camp that they have a long weekend and invite students. Yeah. Um, but what more, I'm, I'm not sure. I think yeah. we should speak to Janne, who is our colleague from yeah. NTNU, and have her give yeah. us a short introduction to what yeah. they do. And I can use this opportunity to invite everyone to check out again the final report, the annual report, because in that, with very nice links, uh, all these activities also of NTNU, but all other universities as well, of course, have been described. And for example, for that example, what you have just mentioned, that camp for girls, they have very nice promotion, very professional promotion. I think this is also the way at the end, lots of communication effort is being yeah. uh, put in, uh, in mainstreaming the topic of today's discussion, uh, because without communication, we cannot reach people. And, it, and we keep uh, getting pictures like the picture of Katrin in the beginning with all the men sitting there. So I think it's also lots of communication. It's the pictures tell also a lot at the end, what is the status quo? Yeah. Yeah, and NTNU, their website is very good. We are looking into yeah. that and trying to get the communication people at Chalmers too. Yeah. Maybe also yeah, one of be the inspired. things which we can learn in the in, in an uh, alliance like enhance, of course, in this exchange, like uh, yeah, all speakers confirmed. Okay, I check one more thing. There is, an, there is agreement in that, that we need to ask students about their needs and concerns. This is a comment. And have you implemented this in enhance or in your universities? I can understand the question like that. So agreement that we need to ask students about their needs and concerns. I'm not sure if we, what do we say to that? Uh, how is it in your universities, Katrin, Maria, or Diana? Do you have any some, something similar? <clears throat> or is it, but, it mm -hmm. but I know it happens mostly uh, in a base that there is a mentoring or a consulting when there is a question, a need, or concern. There are structures to go to uh, and to ask, hey, can you help me? I have a need, I have a specific concern. 
which is also mm -hmm. named uh, in one part of the uh, annual report with some links, what kind of consultings are being offered by different enhanced universities. You can just uh, click through the links actually in the uh, report. This mm -hmm. is what I would say maybe to introduce. Any additions from? Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. I think yeah. we have at least two approaches. Yeah. One is the approach that we ask the students, um, um, how, how, how are they doing, how they, um, what they think about their courses, their professors, or the situation at the university. We ask them, that there's a, a system of quality management, um, which we have to have, but we also like to have it. And um, students can address their, their problems and, and, and uh, bad situations in, in these uh, evaluations. Um, this is one point, but there's the other point that we have um, a lot of consultancies and, and a lot of uh, consulting um, where people can address their problems, not only they are asked, do you have problems when they know, yes, I have a problem, I can go there to the colleagues of the Equal Opportunities Office, for example, or the student representatives that they can go there and address their problems and uh, yes, they get advice there and support. Yes, the same journey is structured uh, at the at UPB. We have mentoring programs. Uh, we have an equality unit, international offices, and all of these structures. They provide uh, support and help for students. Uh, they provide many services and service surveys <laughs> that um, let us know what are their concerns and uh, what they need any problems that can uh, emerge. So uh, there is a whole journey through the university, uh, through all these structures where students can find support. Yeah. We have that uh, too. Having said that and looking at the time, I will just ask uh, my dear panelists to make a one sentence final statements. So let's see what, what are your thoughts when you think about today's discussion, how to mainstream gender equality and diversity. Maybe let's make a short round. And uh, I would like to start uh, by Katrin again, because we showed your picture in the beginning mm -hmm. first. So uh, mm -hmm. share with us, please, a final statement your, about today's discussion, your thoughts. <laughs> There are there are still things to do. Yes, we, we can learn from each other. That's the most important thing. The the, the benefit of the enhanced alliance to get to know each other and to discuss, and uh, yes, to learn how other university universities solve the problems better than we have done yet. Thank you. Ella. So you can give the uh, ball to Diana. So. Yes, I believe that uh, we need a real commitment uh, of the different units and structures inside each enhanced university. And of course, then the coordination and collaboration between all the, the universities. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I agree. And yeah, thank you. Uh, and after what we've been saying today, you, you might wonder why we work in this field when we don't really see <laughs> that it's going to be solved but it's really a topic that is so important that it's I want to do some work in this field and I think together we we can make sure that it's on the table and, and Hans puts this on the table so this is a strong statement that for all these universities diversity is a key and maybe a hope would be in a few years time that there will be some world-breaking new invention that is made by a group of scientists from all of our, our universities all different backgrounds and just stating that yes, together we worked, we're so diverse, you can't even say how many dimensions we're diverse in, but we solved the complicated issue. So I hope something like that will come out. Great closing about that. Thank you also with your background picture again, it kind of confirms and uh, yeah, makes the statement I think even more strong. Uh, I say, uh, Danke schön. I say muchas gracias and I say tak to uh, our panelists uh, for your very in inspiring and interesting contributions. I enjoyed also talking to you uh, about these uh, topics. I thank everyone, of course, who have visited our webinar. Uh, and like I said in the beginning, it is the first webinar and not the last one. And so next week we will uh, organize again another webinar, which I want to invite you. So you can still come and join and listen to the discussion with other speakers, with other topic. The, topic of the next week will be how to empower underrepresented groups. So this is also a very important part of our general discussion in this 
And yeah, having said that, I wish you a great day wherever you are in Europe, in the world. And yeah, I hope you could get some input, some ideas, inspirational backgrounds from our uh, discussion and then use it in your work for more mainstreaming of gender equality and diversity. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you.